Hello friends, welcome to this next video on complex analysis. Okay, in the last video, we have seen what are domains, right? So basically, domains are open connected sets in R, uh, in C. And we, we also discussed that why we need domains. We said that for a function from A, B to R, in case of real functions, most of the theorems are defined when we have intervals here, right? And similarly, we said that we need some sets here when we define function from C to C, okay? So basically, we need some particular sets of C, subsets of C, okay? For which most of the theorem of complex analysis will be defined, okay? Will be stated, most of the theorems of complex analysis, this complex analysis will be stated. So we, in the last video, we discussed that these sets are domains. We just stated that these sets are domains, but we don't know how these sets are domains. So let us just have one flavor, like how these domains are important, okay? So we know that we have this theorem in uh, real analysis. Basically what we want to do is we want to like, uh, create everything what we have in real analysis in complex analysis. We have this theorem in real analysis that if f, of, uh, f is a function from a, b, interval a, b to r, such that uh, the derivative of f with respect to f, x is 0, then f is constant on a, b, okay, right? Now we would like to have a similar theorem for complex analysis, right? A similar theorem we would like to have in complex analysis. Okay, now suppose you have a function from C to C, right? Or some subsets of uh, subset of C or, or F, F which is a subset of C, okay? So how, how this function looks, this function is like, you have C here, you have C here, you have some subset S here, and then this function is from this set S to this whole complex plane C, right? Okay, so this will be, you will take a z from here and you will get a w here, right? So basically you have u, w is equal to f of z and this is a complex number obviously. So it is actually u plus iota v is equal to f of x plus iota y where this u and v are real obviously, right? So I can write it as f of x plus iota y is equal to u of x comma y. Obviously this will be a function of this number x and y and plus iota times v of x comma y, right? Where this x comma y and y comma y, uh, sorry, u of x comma y and v of x comma y, they are functions from, they are actually real functions from this set S to this real line, okay? This is your real line. So you have these functions from S to R, okay? So, Somehow studying a function C to C is equivalent to studying these functions U and V from some subset, it is S or C, S or C to R, okay, right? So, uh, we would like to state the theorems for U and V, right? You can state separately theorems for U and V instead of separating theorems for F, right? So, we will have a similar theorem like this, we have a theorem okay for this particular function u of x comma y so basically what i am saying is that instead of stating a theorem for a function from c to c we can state uh, state that theorem for a function of two variables for a real function of two variables this is a complex function so uh, we can state that theorem for a uh, real function of two variables let us see how that theorem will look so we have this theorem i will just write the statement the theorem says That if you suppose u of x comma y is a real valued function defined in a domain. So this domain is important, right? Suppose that domain is D. Okay. This is assumption. And if the first partial derivatives of u, if the first 
partial derivatives of u satisfy that curly u by curly x is 0 and curly u by curly y is equal to 0 at all the points in D at all the points in D then u is equal to constant in D okay. this is what we want to prove ok so let us have the proof ok so this domain we will use right suppose so how how what is the situation we have something like this we have this domain d here and we have real x is r here so we have a function okay from this domain okay this is my x axis this is my y axis so you have this u of x comma y domain means this is an open connected set which we defined last in the last video right okay so now you are saying that curly u by curly x is 0 right so it means that u is not a function of x right it means that u will not change if you change x if you change x okay so it means that Suppose this is my domain and I am standing here, okay, here is some value of u, suppose 5 or something, right, okay, and then you move along a horizontal line, okay, so you come here, because you are moving along a horizontal line and u will not change with respect to x, when you move from here to here, from point A to point B, only x is changing because you are moving horizontally. So it means that the value of u will remain same. It will be 5 at point b also. So it means that u will not change along any horizontal axis. Okay. Is that thing clear? Right. And similarly, we have a horizontal axis and that axis should be of course in D because this this thing is true in D, right? Any any horizontal axis in D, right? Similarly, you have curly u by curly y is equal to 0. It means that u is not a function of y. It means that u will not change along any vertical axis. In D. Why so? Because when you move from B, suppose B to C, along a vertical line only y is changing and you are saying that u is not changing with respect to y so it means that when you move from b to c okay that is a vertical line inside d your u will not change so now you have the value of u is equal to 5 at b it will be 5 at c okay so now right now what we have we have something like this that we have this domain right and suppose I, I take a point A here and a point B here and there is a path consisting of horizontal and vertical lines from A to B. Now if I am going from, a, suppose the value of U is 5 here, then because it will not change horizontally, it will be 5 here. Now because it will not change vertically, it will be 5 here. Again, because it will not change horizontally, it will be 5 here. And again, because it will not change vertically, it will, it will be 5 here. So, it means that along any polygonal path, so what we have, we have this thing. Along any polygonal path in D, which consists of only horizontal and vertical lines, consisting of only horizontal and vertical line segments okay the value of u will remain same okay now till now we we use nothing about that domain we did not use the property of 
openness or connectedness of the domain right now what is our aim our aim is our aim is we want to prove that u is equal to constant in d so it means that what i want to prove is that if i take any two points a and b in the domain then u at a should be same at same as u at v, b this is what i want to prove let us do that now we have we have this thing that in the domain like if we have a polygonal path which is consists of which consists only of horizontal and vertical line segments my value of u will not change but my aim is that for any two arbitrary points inside my domain the value of u should not change right okay let us do that okay so suppose we have a domain and our domain can be like of any form any type any complicated form right suppose i make one complicated domain so my, suppose my domain is something like this okay so so basically th this part is excluded this part is excluded this part is excluded this this is my domain right this is my domain suppose this is my domain d these parts are excluded let us just excluded 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 right okay so suppose i take any two arbitrary points a and b you take a here and b here right take let a and b be any two arbitrary points in d now by definition of connectedness now you know that d is connected d is domain implies d is connected recall from last video okay it means that a and b are connected by polygonal path note that that path that is only a polygonal path it it is not necessary that that path is consisting of horizontal and vertical lines only so let us draw the polygonal path here so we you can draw something like this you have a point here so you can draw like this okay then you can come here like this okay and then you can come so this is the path which you have right now okay this is the polygonal path which joins a and b right now next property which is left is openness d is open right so because d is open so you can actually uh, you can actually write this uh, instead of having this polygonal line this line segment in your polygonal path you can just have a combination of horizontal and vertical lines for example this path this line is same as this path but that lines should be inside your d they should not come out of d right that there you should, you will use the property of openness i should have drawn it in different color anyways so here you have this horizontal line let me draw it in different color here so that we have we want to convert this segment of the line into horizontal and vertical paths so you can have something like this this is vertical then then this is horizontal okay little small and then again vertical right and here you have this line something like this we can have this vertical line and this horizontal line okay so because of openness every line segment of this particular polygonal path can be okay can be replaced with the combination of horizontal and vertical lines right okay openness will ensure that you are not going out of the domain right this is just because this point is inside the domain then obviously there exists a small neighborhood of a which will be completely inside d so it means that you can ensure that your horizontal and vertical lines will be completely inside d right so openness is required here right so now what is the situation we have so we have this situation that 
we have a domain and we, if we have any two points a and b they are they can be connected by horizontal uh, by a polygonal path which consists only of horizontal and vertical line segments so a and b okay they are connected by a uh, by a polygonal path consisting of only horizontal and vertical paths right okay so it implies that u at a is same at u at b so it implies that u is constant in d okay this is what we wanted to prove right so both this openness and connectedness are required okay so let us just see at one counter example if there is no connectedness so this theorem will not work suppose you have see this function u of x comma y is equal to 1 if mod of z is less than 1 and it is 0 if mod of z is greater than 2 right now see for this particular function what is your fun set here where your function is defined the set looks like this okay so your set is this part and this part okay and it is open because boundaries are not included this is your set right you have a function now your function is defined is equal to 1 here and 0 here right so your derivative of u with respect to x is 0 derivative of u with respect to y is 0 right but you can see your function is not constant obviously but u is not equal, is equal to constant why because this is not a domain this is not connected right you cannot connect a point here and point here right okay so uh, and in case of open uh, open uh, uh, sorry if there is no openness suppose you have this square you will have that problem right if you have a point here okay and you have like uh, your some uh, domain can be of the form that you cannot join two points with the uh, uh, polygonal path which consists only of horizontal and vertical line segments so you will have a problem in writing your line segment of the polygonal path as a combination of horizontal and vertical lines if there is no openness right so both openness and this connectedness are required for proving this theorem so in this way this theorem we will use again and again this theorem that if curly u by curly x is equal to 0 curly u by curly y is equal to 0 in d where d is the domain then u is equal to constant this, this will be used very uh, many times in all the theorems which we will prove in complex analysis. So, this domain is actually important, right? So, you just now have a flavor how this D is important, how this property of openness and connectedness of the domain is important in proving the theorems, okay? So, in the coming videos, we will have more interesting and uh, very exciting results in complex analysis, okay? Thank you.